Welcome back to our tour of the evolution of kitchen design. We started off, if you'll recall, looking at the kitchens of, say, the turn of the century, 1900 up to 1920. At that point, kitchens were workspaces. You had a sink, you had a wood stove, you had a table where you could prepare food, and you had cabinetry to hold your dishes and presumably your food. Sometimes you had a nice box. Not necessarily, though. When we move a little forward and go into the 1920s, we had uh, more of... A modern kitchen, well, they certainly would have seen it as a modern kitchen, but for us, we still look at this and see this as stylized furniture. This is not the kitchen we recognize. And we can look at it and say, yes, this is a kitchen, but it, generally speaking, does not look very much like the kitchens we are cooking in ourselves. We took a look at things like the Hoosier cabinet or this piece, which is an all-in-one kitchen that includes an ironing center, an ice box. Obviously, we have uh, plenty of, of room to store. We have a little bit of a countertop for food prep. Most of the food prep was done on the table. Uh, there would have been a table in the kitchen. You might have eaten at that table, but that's where the food prep would have been done. And this, this sort of all-in-one cabinet is uh, an update from the 1930s on the traditional Hoosier cabinet. By the 1940s, going into the 1950s, what we saw was something that rather closely resembles our modern kitchen. We saw integrated cabinetry. We saw the sink as part of our kitchen uh, built right into the countertop. We had upper cabinets. They matched our lower cabinets. And we were starting to see a little bit of color peeking in. By the 1950s, what we were looking at was something that is remarkably similar to our modern kitchen. We could, we could move into this kitchen of the 1950s and intuitively understand how it works. Also, what we're looking at is, in general, white cabinetry going right back throughout the previous 50 years. We also talked a little bit about the science of kitchen design, the major uh, innovation being the kitchen work triangle. But this was the result of efficiency experts helping women to negotiate their space and their role as the sole provider of the meals. So these kitchens were designed with one cook in mind, and that one cook was a woman who stayed at home and did all of this necessary work herself, and she was only about five foot two. We are still living with that idea. So when we come back, we are going to take a look at kitchens of the following decades, and hopefully we're going to start getting closer to what we now have in our own kitchens. Picking up in the 1960s, one of the first things you are going to notice in these 1960s kitchens is color. The cabinets, although some of them were still white, white was still a popular kitchen color, uh, 
They were getting away from that. They were looking at colors. The hot colors in the early 60s were pinks and blues. Green has always been a popular kitchen color. But the one that we're looking at right now is blue cabinets. We are seeing built-in appliances. If you start uh, left to right, we're looking at a built-in oven. And following that, we have a built-in range top with a built-in hood. And notice this is in a peninsula. This was new. This, this idea that the kitchen would somehow be open to the rest of the house. Remember, prior to this, it was strictly a workspace. And so it was closed off, usually at the back of the house. This particular peninsula is interesting because the upper cabinets, the cabinets above it, are suspended from the ceiling. Uh, that was a very 60s thing. As we move on, we see that the refrigerator is built into a cabinet that's behind our charming 60s housewife, and the doors are paneled in some sort of wood grain texture. And this was new. This was not ordinary. This was not standard. This sort of refrigerator was, well, it was the sort of thing you would see in a designer magazine and not in someone's home. And then as we continue moving to the right, you see the dishwasher. And again, in the early 60s, you would be hard pressed to find dishwashers in very many of the homes in your neighborhood. Next up, well, we have taken that suspended cabinetry right up to the next level. Again, more color, pastels, blues, yellows. We've got a light brown here. We have a blue countertop. Again, the same built-in range top. And the whole color scheme goes through to the eating area, which is probably not a formal dining room. That's probably an annex to the kitchen. Again, the color scheme goes right through there. Color was the big thing in the 60s. That, of all of the changes, that has to be the most apparent. This picture. Now, this is not a genuine old kitchen. This is a retro kitchen. It's styled to look as if it would fit into the late 50s, early 60s. I included this for a reason, and I have avoided using modern interpretations of old designs because we, we have our own way of viewing this. And if we want to know what real kitchens were like, we have to look at real kitchens. This, no, modern interpretation of an older style but the reason I wanted to include this is because I really think this is just gorgeous. This is not my preferred era for kitchen design, but I think the person who created this kitchen, oh, this is clearly a labor of love. We know the color scheme comes from the mid-50s because we saw the same pink and green color scheme in that 1950s decorator book we looked at. Part of the reason that I couldn't resist throwing this in is because the whole point of this Evolution of Kitchen Design series is because I do want to encourage you to do what works for you in your kitchen. And by that, I don't just mean mechanically, how are you going to get from the refrigerator to the sink to the stove, but I mean what works for you emotionally, aesthetically. And I have to tell you, this is a kitchen that works for me. All right, back to genuine 60s kitchens. Again, we have white cabinets. And as I mentioned before, white cabinets are becoming phased out. But what's interesting in this kitchen is it, too, is integrated into the rest of the house. In the center of the room, you can see a pass-through going into the dining room. You can see the color scheme. The windows uh, in the kitchen are 
curtained in the same color as the dining room beyond. One is cafe curtains, the other is the same shade of green in the draperies. And we're starting to see little bits of decorative elements in unexpected places, like the wallpaper in that little seating niche under the pass-through. And notice, Mom still has a chair in that kitchen. So what we know from this is that the idea of sitting down while you worked was with us for a lot longer than I think most of us suspect. This one, color. And this is permanent color. This is not wallpaper. This is tile. And uh, the tile is um, on the left-hand side. And the wall on the right-hand side is stone. So we're seeing permanent color. We are seeing people who really invested time and money into slapping color into their kitchens. And notice the appliances are blue. Yes, blue was a hot color for kitchen appliances in the 1960s. Once again, the appliances are built in because they clearly wanted that streamlined look. Here, more blue. In this case, we have just sort of like this, this monolithic blueness. We have a blue refrigerator. We have a blue range. We have a blue dishwasher. We have blue cabinets. Even beyond, in the laundry room, and that's what you see at the far left, the washer and dryer are blue. They loved their color. Now, that was almost predictable. When you have a situation in which people have been living in primarily white kitchens for the last 50 years, you are going to see a backlash. That is almost inevitable. And boy, this was some serious backlash. Here's another one. This is, this is actually, although it's very, very dated, I think the color scheme is rather soothing. We're looking at pink and white, and it's, it's a mauve sort of pink, not baby pink. Uh, the appliances are white. The cabinets are mostly white, highlighted in pink. I don't know what this, this, uh, what the purpose of this picture was. I suspect it was to advertise that refrigerator because it does seem to be the prominent feature in this room. But certainly this is a kitchen that was done by a decorator. Not the sort of thing you'd be likely to see in every home. But would you see it in some homes? Yes, or variations thereof. Again, color but not really overboard with the color. Here we go with another kitchen using white cabinets and picking up color in other areas. And there is a lot of color. Boy, there is a lot of stuff going on here. The, the pictures, these little tiny pictures running around the top of the ceiling and down the side, I believe this is something that has been taken from wallpaper. Uh, it's hard to see, but it, it looks very two-dimensional to me. Something like this was typical. This is a kitchen you would have seen in someone's home, right down to the odd little jut in the cabinetry next to the sink. That was starting to become a thing. They were breaking out a little. Once again, appliances are built in. The cabinets are metal. These metal cabinets were everywhere. Post-World War II, there was a period of about 20 years when if you had a cabinet, nine times out of ten, it was a metal cabinet. They were serviceable. They were inexpensive. They were absolutely ubiquitous. Oh, and they could very easily be painted to, you know, if you changed your mind and wanted your kitchen cabinets to be green tomorrow, all it took was a can of paint. 
This one. This is a kitchen that is moving into the late 60s. And we can see this because that sleek 60s look is still with us, but we're starting to see the late 60s colors. Green, yellow, brown. Those are colors that went through kitchen design right up until 1980. And we will notice this again and again. These cabinets are wallpapered. Even the area under the range top has been wallpapered, and certainly at least part of that is part of the range top. Interesting. What that tells you is how far they were willing to go to decorate their kitchen. Now, these, these yellow and green panels you see uh, in the center left side of the image above the countertop. Those are sliding panels, and this was a pass-through that could be closed off. Remember, the 60s gave us the peninsula, the suspended upper cabinets, and these pass-throughs in order to integrate the kitchen into the rest of the house. But the most important thing it gave us was color. And here we go with late 60s color. Again, green, yellow, brown. Those are the hot colors. The appliances, as you can see, are yellow. We have painted cabinetry in green. And this wonderful, oh my gosh, that is a paisley design that I would date to about 1967. Very, very period, if you will. This is the sort of thing that you probably would have seen in an elegant and modern household. Very, very typical of the kind of color that was coming into the kitchen at this point. And this is our last image from the 60s. Again, here are our colors. Green, yellow, brown. As I mentioned before, the appliances in this period were also green, yellow, brown. Now, there were a few other colors. You could get red appliances. The brown would sometimes go right into orange or pumpkin. One of the issues with appliances was every manufacturer had their own color. The color we are looking at is a sort of chocolate brown. Other manufacturers would have a brown that was more copper or more coffee. The yellow range would go from the color of these cabinets, which was usually called something like harvest gold, and they all had their own names, right up to pale off-white color that eventually led to almond, which was much later a popular color. The green appliances were the most easily matched up because they all stuck with the same range. It was avocado green. Insanely popular appliance color, especially as we move into the 1970s. And because every manufacturer's green appliance was in the avocado range, you could buy uh, a Maytag washer and match it to your General Electric refrigerator and match it to your Westinghouse range. So it gave the consumer more options. And that's one of the reasons that green hung on well. All right. We are going to go over now to the 1970s. In many ways, the 70s were just a carryover of the late 60s. And this picture is rather typical. Here's our avocado green. But remember, green, brown, yellow. And that's what we've got going here. This is well into the 70s. What you will notice going into the 70s is we are not painting our cabinets anymore. Our cabinets are now 
wood. Wood has become dominant. And kitchens are now virtually standardized in that green, yellow, brown range. You do see some variations on the theme. And as I say, even among the manufacturers, it wasn't the same shade of yellow right across the board. But green, yellow, brown became the kitchen colors of that decade with, of course, wood. Kitchens got very dark. Here is another avocado green everywhere you look. I don't even know what to say about this. This is early 70s. This is what the early 70s looked like. Gotta love that flowered whatever it is she's wearing. It's like, oh yeah. And notice how well the purple matches her beautiful green kitchen. Y you have to wonder what these people were thinking, but okay. And here we go with wood going into the brown and yellow line. Notice that the overwhelming impression of the kitchen now is wood cabinetry. It's wood, wood, wood. It's, it creates a very dark, very claustrophobic look. And you'll see this from one kitchen to the next. Individuals might brighten up their kitchens a bit, but overall, these kitchens were pretty oppressive looking. What we have here that is a little unusual is that breakfast aisle, uh, island rather, in the middle of the room. That is not a common feature in the 70s. That's something that came in later. But this particular kitchen design was from a cabinet manufacturer. So hence all the cabinetry and the, the island, which incorporates even more cabinetry. My goodness, cabinetry on every wall isn't enough for you. Stick it in the middle of the floor. This is a real person's real kitchen from the 1970s. And I like these. They're a little different from looking at the flooring ads or the appliance ads or the cabinet ads because these were rarely state of the art. Kitchens like this usually represented how real people lived with appliances that would be mismatched or in this case, wallpaper on the ceiling. Once again, same color scheme, that, that green, yellow, brown, overwhelming wood cabinetry. But we're seeing some different things in here, like that stainless steel surround around the sink. That was not standard. That's something that this homeowner incorporated on their own. And they were, in fact, well ahead of their time with this. But again, we're still seeing built-in appliances. Notice the dishwasher, and that's right about in the center of this bank of cabinetry. The dishwasher has a panel to match it to the cabinets. Um, interesting kitchen. And as I say, valuable because it's a real kitchen. This one is uh, from a decorating magazine. Again, we are looking at mostly yellow and brown. We don't see the usual touches of green in here, but I'm sure if we looked at the other side of the room, we would. Very, I don't know, claustrophobic. This odd lowered lighting fixture, which is just massive, that's over this kitchen peninsula, is, gosh, it, it really does lend even more claustrophobia to an already dark space. I don't know what it was that was so appealing to them about this, but it is the absolute antithesis of that stark white kitchen we saw back in 1910, 1920, 1930. Oh, and here, wallpaper. 
once again, we are back to our brown, yellow, green. Mostly in this case, it's brown and green with yellow accents. Oh, and of course, the lovely orange stretch pants. That's just such a nice touch. This clearly is an ad, and it's an ad for cabinetry. So obviously the cabinets are going to be highlighted. This is what kitchens looked like in the 70s. This was a fairly ordinary kitchen. It wasn't super high-end designer, uh, which is one of the things I like about this picture. And once again, same old, same old, but do notice wallpaper because it, we're going to be seeing a lot more of that. Ah, and here we go. Goodness gracious. This is just, I don't even know what to say. The orange and yellow flowers are overwhelming. This is a kitchen that is mostly brown and orange, a lot of yellow. We don't have our usual green. But as you can see, this was the, the standard kitchen look. The range is interesting because what we have here is a double oven range. That appliance on the top of the range was an additional oven. Uh, and we will see more of that in a, uh, of a different sort later on. But the two ovens, that was starting to become a thing. And in the mid to late 70s, highly desirable. Uh, they, uh, at least one manufacturer was calling it a chateau. So, yeah, that was the elegant in appliance. Stainless steel sinks were becoming hot then too. Low cost, absolutely ubiquitous. Here we go with even more wallpaper. This is just green. Uh, yes, we have some touches of yellow. I'm not even sure if that's yellow. That might be off-white. It might be looking yellow because it's reflecting all the green. Again, dark, claustrophobic. I, I just, I don't know how anybody could be comfortable working in a kitchen like this. But, once again, we have the peninsula to separate it. That's on the right. The peninsula to separate it from the rest of the space with the suspended bank of upper cabinets. Very 60s, 70s sort of thing. And here even more color. And yes, this was a thing. People would paint out their cabinets. They would add wallpaper to the inset panels. They would have artists come in and do this in the more elegant kitchens. As you can see, we are looking at yellow and brown here. Color. We are swamped with color. This is, well, this is, again, a lot of color. Once again, we have built-in appliances that really seem to be a thing. We have more color than we know what to do with. And an overall impression of, of a dark space, even though there's a lot of white in this one. This one. Again, wallpaper, and this isn't just any wallpaper. This is Mylar wallpaper. That was just huge at the time. It really was. Dark cabinetry, this avocado green refrigerator, and something that, although you used to see a lot of it in real homes, you don't see a lot in pictures, and that is baskets of hanging plants. Everybody had plants in their kitchen. If you had a window, there was a plant in front of it. If you had a hook, there was a plant hanging from it. And of course, we have the little wallpaper insets on the bottoms of the cabinets. Mm, how exciting. This, again, is a real kitchen. Uh, 
This is not a, a designer kitchen. This is not something that somebody put together for a magazine ad. It's an actual kitchen somebody lived in. Once again, you're seeing the baskets, the wicker, the, the spider plant. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I should have mentioned that. The plant everyone had in their kitchen was a spider plant. It was almost mandatory. This is a lighter kitchen, but still we see that dark sort of yellowish color. Uh, at this, this is more of a mustardy. And this is not the most colorful kitchen we are going to be seeing from this decade. But you can see the color is sort of jumps out at you. Oh, and here. This is an ad for cabinetry. I I'm sure you guessed that already. Holy guacamole. Nothing but wall-to-wall -wall wood. This was, in my mind, the typical 70s kitchen. How much wood can we stick in there and can we style it to this sort of fake, uh, they called it Mediterranean, that, that particular style. This fake Mediterranean look. Oh, wow, what were we thinking? All right, here we are in the 80s. Where did all the color go? The 1980s was almost exclusively oak cabinetry, and almond appliances. In the 1980s, the number one appliance color was almond. 80% of all of the appliances sold in the United States were almond. Uh, a little under 10%, I think it was 9% were white, and the remaining 11% were other colors, either people buying the new uh, black or steel uh, surfaces, or people buying replacement appliances to match their avocado or coffee brown or harvest gold yellow. But this is what an 80s kitchen looked like. Oak and almond. And here we have this again. Um, note here, we have a Formica countertop. This Formica had been introduced as early as the 60s, but these laminate countertops suddenly became very affordable and they became accessible to do-it-yourselfers. Now, this kitchen, by the way, these appliances are newer, but the kitchen itself is early 80s. Um, appliances, as I say, they are newer. They are not early 80s. They're a little later, but... Um, Mostly what I wanted you to see is the bare bones, the things that, you, that, that you're kind of stuck with if you buy it. That brick backsplash, oh my, yes. And this, this was something that came out in the early to mid 80s. Laminate cabinets, almond with that oak banding. My goodness, that was everywhere. The thing about these cabinets is because the surface was laminate. It was basically a sheet of formica applied to plywood or particle board. They could be produced very inexpensively. The only real wood was that little oak band on the cabinet. Uh, you didn't use handles. Uh, you just sort of grabbed a little finger hold at the bottom of the cabinet. And... Black glass oven doors. This is the forerunner of black appliances. This was suddenly the thing. And this is, when I think of a 1980s kitchen, this is what I think of. This is absolutely what they looked like. The color has bled right out. Now, here is another kitchen. This kitchen is from the 1980s. I recognize the appliances, so yeah, 1980s. It's a real kitchen. 
And what you see here is the way a kitchen would have evolved. This kitchen was probably originally built in the 60s. I suspect the cabinets were replacements at some point. We have that mandatory post-formed countertop for mica, the stainless steel sink, again, durable, inexpensive, and modern appliances. This bank of cabinetry on the far right is probably that peninsula with the suspended upper cabinets over top of it. And once again, our 1980s kitchen, all oak all the time. Very typical. And again, we have the black glass doors. Remember, those two ovens were both cooking ovens. The combination of range and microwave had not yet been introduced. There is something in the far corner behind the refrigerator, you can see it, it's right in the middle of the picture, that I believe is probably the giant 1980s microwave. Yes, my first microwave, I swear I am not lying about this, was 38 inches across. Yep, you could cook a turkey in that thing. I don't know what to tell you. Again, typical. Um, the color is bled out. We have all of the, the same features we've been seeing over and over again. We have a little bit of color in the soffit above the cabinetry. Again, we have that double oven range because, you know, you needed two ranges, a built-in dishwasher. But we are seeing something a little different here in that these appliances are white rather than the ubiquitous almond. Again, very common 80s configuration. We're going into the later 80s because now we're moving over to that black in the appliances. The range is all black with the black glass door. The dishwasher has a black glass panel. The microwave, and notice it is a microwave above the range, two separate pieces, but that was now the new thing. You would have the microwave either as part of your double oven range or in this little niche above the range. One of the interesting things about this is we are starting to see uh, the integrated sink. Now, this is a sink that has been dropped into our Formica countertop, but the sink blending into the countertop is going to become standard in a couple of years. Every 1980s kitchen needed a butcher block. That was just huge. It was either a real butcher block like this, and this is an actual real serviceable butcher block, or it would have been a wooden cart with a little wooden top or maybe even a genuine butcher block top, but you would have had that in your kitchen. That was just, oh, you had to have that. And notice our countertop, because now we're starting to move into either custom Formica, we're moving away from that post form Formica, or solid surface, things like Corian, Wilson Art, which are coming onto the market as alternatives to the high-end granite that you saw in really expensive kitchens. Once again, here we go. Uh, we are starting to get a little bit of a taste of a higher-end kitchen here. The countertops here are granite. Well, they're stone. I, I'm assuming they're granite. Uh, our appliances are stainless steel, meant to look industrial commercial, which was becoming a new thing. And 
in this kitchen, the only color we see comes from the uh, the personal possessions of the homeowner, the dishes, um, the little teapot on the stove. Other than that, not a lick of color. This is very typical. And we are starting to see the kitchen island emerge. Uh, what, what the butcher block started, the kitchen island sort of took over. And this is very 80s. Light oak, nothing but almond, not not any any color at all. The only color we see here comes from the ye little yellow flowers, and that's it. This is a new trend that's emerging in the 80s, and it will get bigger and better as time goes on. And this is the sort of European farmhouse. Um, to say European farmhouse is not really accurate, because what we're looking is more like chateau farmhouse. This is not the average, you know, grandma and grandpa's chicken farm in Central Europe. Not even close. Notice what the butcher block in the middle of the room has evolved into. It's become this wonderful old rustic cart that's, gosh, that's a fabulous piece. We have a commercial range, and that was starting to become popular. It was also ghastly expensive. You could go out to Sears, buy a range for three, maybe four hundred dollars, or you could get a wolf uh, range, a wolf commercial stove for three or four thousand dollars. So that gives you some idea of why this was out of the budget of the average person. But this was the beginnings of a style that we're going to see more of later. And this one, I was thrilled when pot racks became fashionable, and boy, did they come in in the 80s. And that's because I have copper pots. I also loved this sort of kitchen style. And you will see why in a minute. This is part of that European farmhouse look. Uh, there is a large industrial stove in that sort of fake fireplace in the very back of the photo, right in the center. And this was not your ordinary kitchen. Uh, this, this kitchen is probably at least 20 by 30 feet, so it was not going to be in your average home. But this is what you were going to see in decorator magazines. So let me show you something rather similar. This is not from a decorator magazine. This is from a, a website that shows photos of the castle kitchens in historic homes. So, just to look at them side by side, the one on the left is 1980s. The one on the right is probably 1580s. So, that's why you can see why, why I just adore it. It's it's wonderfully historic, and it's it very much appeals to me because I, I love old stuff. But this is where we ended up in the 1980s. What goes around comes around, as they say, and we were right back to the medieval castle kitchen. All right, that is all we have time for today. So we've gone right up to the late 80s. When we get back together tomorrow, we're going to take a look at kitchens from the 90s going up to present, and we are going to talk about your kitchen. All right, let's take a quick look at a slideshow on the way out. Please remember, the giveaways are still going on over on the Sumi's Angels Facebook page, so check them out, and I will see you all tomorrow. Have a terrific day.